Can you guys see this one good? Okay. This is what we see today. Um, this is the foramen magnum, which just means big hole. This is then the base of the spine comes into the skull. Now, right here is the very middle. And the reason it's in the middle is because of bipedalism, right? This is the center balance. This is the center of gravity, and it's the easiest to balance our skull on this. In primates, it's usually found in the back because they walk on all fours. And the orbital tilt makes it so that they should be able to see forward when they walk. We need to look a little bit down. So that's the difference. All right. Now, here is where it gets interesting. This is also a human. Look at that very back of the skull. Now you can see why that elongated skull. You see what happened? In mm -hmm. Peru, they bound their skull. And when you bind the skull and you allow it to grow, the weight shifts and the burden of the skull has now shifted into the back. So what happens is in the lifetime of a human being, it shifts. It's not over decades, it's not over years, it's an epigenetic regulation that takes effect in the lifetime of the person. Here's another Peruvian skull that's not elongated, and it's where our, ours is today, right in the middle. But yet this person lived at the exact same time, in the exact same place, in, this, in the same part of the world, eating the same foods, talking the same language. Now, why is that? Notice that you have to align the skull, even with these little coasters, in the back so that they lean forward far enough for the human to even see in a very different position than humans have it today mm. because of this weight wrapping the skull binding the skull with material to elongate it uh from youth onward uh, yes exactly now would now remember they said this is only found in primates and the, and as they evolve this hole evolved and slowly moved forward towards the center now we know from epigenetics that this is not true. We can clearly see it in humans, in South America, and many places in the world. Not just there, but you can clearly see it in the back of the skull when they do cranial binding. Here is a modern-day skull. Here's the uh, Peru and, and skull. Look at I would love to see the one on this skull. That's incredible. But I just have a couple examples. And then I have even – oh, I showed this one twice. My bad. And then I have another couple examples. Here's an infant, cranial bound, lived for about a year and a half. And here's the eyes and the mouth. I highlighted it so you can see. And the wow. skull is bound. Now look at where the spinal cord enters the skull. Already it's shifting to the back for balance, even though this infant is very young. Here's an adult going into the back of the skull, a little impeded because of the hair. Here's a living human being with an elongated skull. As you can see, the neck is very, very different in its positioning, trying to incorporate the new weight of the skull. This is from a video, I don't have any sound because I just wanted the visuals for you guys to see. He is holding a, a modern human skull that's been cranial bound in a you know, modern day right here, and then ancient right here, look at that. In the far back, exactly where it would be in a primate, yet this is a human. And it changed in the very lifetime of that human being, not over generations, not over thousands of years, and not even millions of years in one lifetime. So we have multiple examples now of this so-called best evidence for evolution, the foramen magnum being in the middle for humans is slowly over, over generations and uh, different speciation rates and different things like Sahelanthropus sagensis, for example, where it's a little bit closer than the other ones. Well, look at this, um, a regular human being, no different from anybody else in the far back because they bound their skull. So did their parents have this? No, unless their parents bound their skull, they didn't. So why would it be there if it's so easily changed? According to evolution, it shouldn't be easily changed. It takes millions and millions of years to slowly adjust to bipedalism. Yet here's a modern-day human walking around that adjusted to the back in one lifetime.